Next, avoid buyer's remorse with validation. What if you got to this stage and you have overfitting? Actually, let me just tell you now. You will get to this stage and you will have overfitting. And what emotion do you feel when you hear that word? This is your quiz. Yeah. Horror, terror, exactly. Overfitting is your worst nightmare, remember? And now I'm telling you, you're going to get to this stage and you will have overfitting. Your model will have memorized the answers instead of learned what you needed to learn. And you won't know that this has happened to you unless you're able to check on fresh data. So you'd better have some fresh data for checking. This is where you validate. You simply take your model and you get your performance on a different set than one you trained it on. If you don't like your performance, go back to training. If you do, go to the next step. Now I say simply, ah, there is that little gotcha. You have to keep your data set fresh. And keeping your data set fresh means you can't go learning from it. You can't go debugging in there and effectively training too much on this data set. So you're going to use this one, this second piece out of your set that you have assigned for exploration. The first piece was training. This is validation. And what is going to happen is this. You're going to love the model you've just trained. It's going to look so promising. You'll take it to validation and it crashes and burns. Well, you should expect this is a long iterative process and your first solution won't work. So now that I've warned you, you won't have a nasty surprise. You're going to go back and try again. And so when you find that it doesn't work, what can you do? In order of likely goodness of approach, try make other features. How will you know what other features to make? Well, through that debugging step where you see what's common among the the instances you succeed on, what's common among the instances you fail on, and what sort of new features would that inspire you to go and construct out of the ones you already have, or ask your engineering team to help you collect. Then, feature subsets. Maybe you got greedy. Maybe you said to yourself, well, all of these features are awesome and I can't bear to part with them. And like the hoarder that you are, you put them all through your model and it was too chubby. And now you pay for it by having overfitting. Well, okay, then you say, fine, I will slim down my model a little bit, try it with few things, see if that works better. Trying a different algorithm. Why is this in position three? Because I'm guessing that if you have followed your instructions to get to this point, you have already tried all the ones that were easy to try with minimal fuss and coding effort. So once you're here, you've already got a whole lot of uh, validation scores on all the things that were easy to try, and it's going to be an engineering annoyance to try something else. So because that's annoying, we put it in position three in terms of its effort to pay off ratio. Then tuning. Tuning tends to pay off a little less than actually changing your algorithm class. So that's in the fourth position there. And finally, changing your model complexity. Okay, there are these situations where it just doesn't work no matter what you do because you're dealing with image recognition and you need neural networks and you've been trying to do it with a line and you've been ignoring the fact that your training performance sucks and you took it to validation and you really got that reality check and it said, this is too simple, doesn't work, okay, then maybe you need to increase your complexity. Chances are, though, that you did diagnose the underfitting earlier and you are already in the more complex set.